and uh, welcome back. My name is Sheldon McLeod, and this is Thinking Out Loud presented to you here exclusively on the Saltwire Network. And of course, where you find your favorite podcasts, a reminder again about our new YouTube channel. Uh, search it out, make sure you subscribe, like it, and uh, ding the bell. You'll know every time something new happens. And it was kind of a surprise for a lot of folks that this announcement was made not too long ago. In fact, uh, just before Christmas, uh, Miles Goodwin had posted on his Facebook page, uh, new April wine group to hit the stages everywhere in 2023. Uh, he points out that although I'm still in the band writing and recording the guys and producing, I'm now officially retiring from touring. My last stage performance after 50 plus years on the road will be in Nova Scotia, March 2nd of 2023. And Miles Goodwin is here with me now. And Miles Goodwin, well, I guess congratulations on the announcement of uh, your pending retirement from the road with April Wine. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it, it's a fact, and it's uh, it's a bit odd. I have to get used to it. I think the longer I'm away from it, the more I'm going to feel. Mm-hmm. You know, right now I know that I'm doing the right thing for me, and uh, uh, my feedback so far has been very positive from the fans. They understand. I've been in the road for over fifty years, and a diabetic in my mid seventies, so. You know, um, my choice. I mean, I can I can sing and I can play, but I just don't I just don't want to do it anymore. And with the diabetes, I'm always white knuckling every day. It's kind of like I never know if the plane's going to get off the ground. I don't know if I'm going to find my luggage. I don't know if the driver's going to show up. I don't know what's going to happen. My life is completely out of my hands, and I'm used to it. But uh, now I just find that it's not really the best thing for my for me, my health wise. So I want to step out. I want to talk about the beginning in a second, but I, I want to go back to uh, there was the Q104 25th anniversary show. You were to perform with the Henmans. It was supposed to be a bit of a reunion and, and you had a, an, an incident, a, a, an accident. And I know you write about it in your your memoir, but was that when things started to change in a lot of ways? Because it wasn't long after that you moved back here to Nova Scotia. Uh, well, I think it was sometime after that. I mean, that happened. What you're referring to was 2007. Mm-hmm. And I've been back here. Well, I, I own property here again just for the last few years. But I mean, I was living around trying to decide what to do about all of that. So yeah, I guess uh, you know, we, I, I was been I've been back for about six seven years, and oh seven is when that happened. Yeah, right. it, you know, a lot of things uh, happened uh, to me personally and health wise during that period that you're talking about. There was a there was a time there for months where I was. In, I, in, in rehab, dealing with uh, the results of internal bleeding and other things um, that uh, that you know I, I took me. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. It was, it was pretty heavy duty. I almost died. They told me I was dead the next day. Period. So anyway, that was then. This is now. I'm okay. I made it. You know, and and, and I've enjoyed being on the road. And I, and I can still sing the bye bye byes at the end of Roller. And, and I love doing it. We played Dartmouth not long ago here in Nova Scotia with 8,000 plus people. And it was so much fun. Mm. And not being with April Wine, now I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss, uh, you know, the big shows, and the fans. Uh, you decided after 50 plus years, tell me, 1968 was the first time you started going out on the road. Tell me a little bit about that, first of all. Oh, Okay, uh, well, April Wine formed in 69. I was with a band called Eastgate Sanctuary down in Cape Breton in 68. Um, I would say I left home to be a professional musician um, in 67. In 67, so I can say I've been on the road since 67, but it's more like 68. Right. I'm just trying to be a little bit precise. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Uh, you know, yeah, over 50 years. That's the, that's that's what we need that's to the, know. That's yeah, the best way to put time. it, because it all lives on Wikipedia, even if it's wrong. Because you've corrected me about other things that others have said or quoted about oh, you and the band man. and and some I of the names. All. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that in the first going on, I'm sure it was, you know, the, the usual suspects playing in, in bars and in clubs and in, I don't know, maybe even weddings. I, I'm not sure exactly where you were touring, but uh, it certainly changed over time with, with the band. Can you talk a little bit about growing through that and when it started to hit perhaps a plateau and started to climb through the 70s and you started hitting making hit records? Well, we, you know, we played everything. We played, I'm trying to think back. With April 1, we played everything. We played, you know, golf courses. I remember playing a golf course. 
Uh, we played uh, high schools, of course, and, and just kind of like anything uh, that came along, you know. We were a cover band for a very short time, but we do our, wrote our own material. So it's kind of hard to get into some of the venues that were around at the time when you're only doing songs that no one's ever heard, you know, which was what I wanted to do from the get-go. It's a way to pick up and leave. But luckily, we didn't spend uh, very much time doing those smaller venues. We did for a while, but, you know, our first album with in 71 with Fast Train opened a whole bunch of doors. And at the same time, Donald K. Donald, you know, Don Tarleton, with his um, with his live shows and promoting live shows across country uh, here in Canada, uh, April Wine was part of that first wave of let's see what happens if we play Lloyd Lloyd Minister, you know, BC, and we truck them in from everywhere, and it worked. And I would bust them in and pick them up, take them home with any smaller towns, and we played the bigger ones, smaller venues. We all over this country, back and forth. Years and years and years of it, but it started off very, very simple, not much money, and all the rest of that typical, typical stuff. Um, you know, as my song says, you know, come here, the band. Uh, you know, it's like it's kind of you know just young kids at that point, more or less, when we left here, and we did everything we had to do. And Canada is a big country, and traveling by bus or car or van or whatever it was that you were doing, I mean, that must have made for some. Or, or can you look back and say I was young enough and I had that piss and vinegar and I was I was loving it. I, I'm not sure how you felt about that. Well, I, you know, it depended. You know, I mean, lots of it. Sure. I mean, wow, you're young, and all of this is happening. You're on the radio. You're you're doing gigs. You're traveling. Yeah. The, what wasn't there to enjoy? You know, it was all new and fresh and fun, and and it was fun for many years, many many years. You know, it's still fun. I still have a good time. The only thing is I don't like, and this is typical, it's a cliche now, it's the travel. It's so difficult, you know. Even if you're healthy and young, it's so difficult. Uh, and it wears you down. That 90 minutes or 100 minutes or two hours on stage, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's pure fun, almost always. <laughs> you know? but, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, it is what it is. And you've had so many great players, performers, artists on stage with you over the years. And, you know, we're talking about the band moving forward, uh, Brian Greenway, who has been, you know, pretty much there since that, that rise. Uh, tell me a little bit about his thoughts when you told him, I'm not going to go out on the road with you guys anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, um, at first they were shocked, you know, cause we were having supper uh, we had a flight delay, cancellation. We're not going anywhere tonight, guys. Let's get together for supper. This was at Pearson in Toronto uh, several months ago. And I went to them and I said uh, that I had had enough, that I want to do it, but I can't. I don't feel comfortable doing it anymore. I'm a little concerned, you know. They got it. Uh, and I said, I'm not doing it, you know. If you guys are into this, we're not doing it. I, I don't really, it's a matter. And I said, you know, Brian, you have to be there if you're into it. And all of the other guys, and Brian's been in since 77. And uh, the other guys, about 15 years each, and, and they really enjoy it. And they all wanted to do it. And they were sorry to see but they, that I was leaving, but they understood it completely. And I said, I'll be there. You know, I mean, this is, you know, kind of my franchise. I want to make sure that the integrity um, and the legacy of April Wine stays true to course if you if you know what i mean i don't want it all of a sudden april went something like you know black sabbath or something i mean that doesn't work so and and i would i love to write and i love to record and and, and produce which i've done for april wine since 75 so you know I'll, all that'll be the same i just won't be there on stage but the new replacement is is better than me anyway so <laughs> but tell me about mark parent or parent sure yeah he's he's yeah. really something be, he, he's very special and what's really interesting and your friends might enjoy this a little bit but the you know when I asked him about you know auditioning if you'd be interested he said yes I, I would love to I'm such a fan and I would love to do this well, please uh, I said okay well we'll work something out well within three or four days he sent me a video recording of just him with an acoustic guitar singing the first four songs of April Wine's set at that time, this summer. 
and uh, and I was with a friend, and I, and I said, listen to this, and I played it for my friend on the phone, and uh, he says, yeah, it's cool, and I said, well, who is that? He says, it's you. I go, no, that is not me. I said, is it that freaky? And he goes, yeah. I said, I didn't notice anybody out there that could do me, you know? <laughs> Where have you been half of my life? <laughs> awesome. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, he's he's a great guitar player. He's a great singer. And the guy, and they are family already. I know Brian Greenway said to me, love Mark, man, we're bonding like already. This was after just a couple of weeks. He says he's becoming a real friend. And they are all friends, you know, and they're all there. They're all in one place. They're all in Montreal. And so they can get together all the time and they are getting together all the time. And I, and it's sounding really, really good. And, uh, you know, he's the, the new fellow is not a kid. He's been around younger than me, but, uh, but I just got some gray like me right here. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he's great. So glad he's in the band. I got very, very lucky this time. When, when you talk about the legacy and the I'm, I'm thinking you've had so much success for so many years that you are part of so many people's soundtrack over decades. And, you know, I can only guess. I think that's part of what makes me a fan is to, to guess what to try and imagine what it's like being on the stage singing the songs that we all know, but they came from you. And, and you know, it, that's a long journey. It's, it's a long question to get to. Uh, you've acknowledged that you're going to kind of miss it. What was that electricity like for you on the stage? At what point? What do you mean exactly? What? Just when when you found you know the the groove and you you found that as you said that that two hours is nothing. That's that's just that's fun. Well, I mean, you know, the, what it really got interesting was when we had a song on the radio. You know, we came into town to places we've never been and local stations playing our radio, you know, our song on the radio, you know, that was, that's when things got really interesting because the rest of it is getting ready for that, preparing for that moment. And, um, you know, so there, from then on, you know, that's when, that's when things get interesting, fun. I always look forward to getting off the road because I could record some more songs. And then the second album had, you know, you could have been a lady and a couple of other things. And all of a sudden we keep, we're going up here, you know, and, and playing better places and more gigs and, and, and discovering new territories with Donald K. Donald's, as I said, in those early years, working with uh, the CRTC because they came out and when they were 67 or 60, 68, I think, or something like the 68 or nine. Anyway, just in time for, you know, we were ready for that. So they helped us a great deal, of course the Canadian content ruling that was uh, became legislated back in that at that time. Uh, and things just got better, man. And we sell more records, more records. And finally, in 1977, when Brian joined us, we broke out of Canada. You know, whoosh, we got to we got to go around the world a bit and, and sell uh, more records, meet more people and have more, you know, even more fun. So, you know, it's been a really good ride, you know, I mean, in the times that you and there are times when you don't feel like doing it. I don't care who it is. There are times when you say, oh, no. Um, and, of course, the people, all the fans, it's and understandably, it's party. It's party time. Let's go. Let's party. You know, we we'll wait to hear this and so forth. But for the band, it is always a job. You're going to work. You're not going to play. You're going to work. And so, there, you know, so sometimes you didn't feel like going to work. Sometimes you were sick. Oh, my God. I mean, I remember so many stories, uh, really, about somebody not being well and what we had to get through to get this done because we're old school and the show must go on. And very rarely has April Wine uh, not been able to do a show um, that they had some control over. I mean, we don't never know, right, outside right. conscious and blizzards. But, yeah, yeah, so, you know. There, there are these stories of, of, you know, rock bands and their rider requirements. How did, how did those things change over the years for you guys? Well, I don't remember the early days in riders, but there had to be something there, a case of beer or something. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, when we at our most decadent, uh, traveling with tour buses and lots of people everywhere, we collected alcohol. Um, and if everybody, somebody like um, Jägermeister, we'd put it on the rider. <laughs> There'd be, Two bottles of Jägermeister, you know, 
one for now, one in, in the bay under the bus, you know. And we would come home with so much alcohol. It was like, oh, my God, because, okay, we want, who wants red wine? Anybody want a <laughs> box of red wine? You know, everything you can think of, every poison you can think of, we would have. And then we would arrive home, and at some point, it's <laughs> unloading, you know, I mean, so much uh, decadence around that. But the dressing rooms had, had, had that kind of assortment, some kind of assortment like that. But, you know, we were never outrageous, like some of them we've heard of people we've heard about. But, you know, we we knew what we wanted, and, and, and it wasn't usually a problem getting a fresh fruit and things like that, and your alcohol, and your, you know, you want Chinese food, you want, you know, Japanese food, you want to have a pizza tonight, boys, what do you want? And we got it, you know. But we were never crazy over the top. We just uh, made sure we had what we needed, then a little bit more for the bus. And often that uh, the mantra is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And I, I yeah. don't know if you're ever uh, going to be comfortable talking about everything that happened from your perspective. I'm not well, sure. Well, no. I mean, when I wrote my, my, my memoir, um, you know, there's lots I didn't touch. There's another two books in there somewhere, you know. Uh, and there was nothing um, really derogatory. Um, there was no nothing hurtful in the book or anything. So you didn't go. I didn't use the book to sh- dump on people, right. and my my two ex wives included. You know, and I, I always prefer to take the um, the high road in explaining something. And I, I I always told the truth, as I know it anyway. And, uh, and it was wonderful to have Brian Greenway there, to, you know, to back me up. And in the book, it would quote, yes, this really did happen. Because people had no idea why these changes were happening, why people came and went. And why did, where did David and Richie go? Why? Where was Jim Hemman after one album? You know, and the rumors uh, and the folklore, if you will, and, and all that kind of stuff. It was like, it was like so wrong all over the place. So I said, the purpose of this book is to just to make things understood properly because I don't say nothing. I don't say nothing. So people don't know where I'm coming from. And, uh, and I want my family to know more than anybody, more than you or me or the fans. I wanted my kids to know all about dad and what he, what went, what he went through, you know, and that's why I wrote it. I wrote it for my family and, and the fans, of course. Yeah. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to the, the second volume uh, of that story. And, I was, I was talking with my kids about this over the holidays. We were listening to music and I said, you know, there was a time when you had the music press, the rock press, but other than that, with no internet, you didn't know about artists. You, you know, there were only stories. There was no way to confirm anything. And then right. those stories over time get lost to the mists of time. And, uh, uh, you know, as, as you say, uh, the, the band hit a, a real high point and the music industry has changed. Radio has changed. And, mm. and I'm wondering how that's, affected you as you've recorded you know your blues albums and you still have music you still produce new music and you know the way that the industry works to get that out there in front of people or into their ears because everything now is about carrying your cell phone around yeah and nobody really does uh, albums and cds anymore you know it's all streaming and, and so forth and giving stuff away I, I you know are almost giving it away and you know, I know I understand the situation somewhat. I, I don't fancy it. You know, and of course, like a lot of us, especially writers, and, you know, composers and publishers, and hey, where you know, how come I'm getting you know zero point you know five six seven pennies on a on a song? You know, um, that's too bad. That's the way it is now. Uh, and so with April Wine, we're recording some new music because I want the new band to have a new a new a new album out there. Or, or, album cd (laughs) a new recording project but after a great deal of discussion at least for now we're going to do one song we're going to just put out we're going to do something that's typical april wine that's brand new that yeah you know with mark singing and brian and everybody's into it and uh, i won't be i'll produce it but that's all and um and release that to radio, to anybody, you know, our, our platforms and if Classic Radio wants to play it, you know, uh, you know, April One's coming to town and, and, and uh, here's something they, they've released and, and you know, uh, around this, this tour, these show dates and things like that. We're going to do that. We're going to feed the audience the new, new material. Will it become a full-blown, you know, 10, 12 tracks like an album? I hope so, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, trying to fit in to what's going on. 
because I know we don't make a difference in the world anymore if we ever did, but I know our fans want more April wine. And because of radio, you know, it's been so good to us, and they still are, Sheldon, you know. Mm-hmm. They've been so good to us over the years. So thank you. <laughs> I, I've heard, I've noticed a change in perhaps, maybe it's your focus, maybe it's the fact that you're, you know, um, older, wiser. Uh, it's less about the party and the fun. The songs you're writing now are about what's happening in Ukraine, the the native kids in Canada. You know, there, there are a lot of very important social issues. Did you, did you ever think about that as a, a writer of April Wine, or is that music just a different way of driving a different message? I'm, I'm just kind of well, in, in, in those, that. yeah, in 07 when I almost died, you know, and, and, and I came out of that, I said to the band, um, I'm going to have to retire. And that was going back, what are we going back, eight, nine years now, something like that. I don't know if, if you remember this, but we auditioned people to replace yep. me. Yeah, we flew them in. We we spent money, and nobody was happy with what they heard. And so I said, I'll stay in the band, but under one condition. We cut our shows down to 30 a year. That's it. I spent all of my life with April Wine. All, I've, no, I've had no time for anything else, and I'm going to make a little time. And so I did. And I wrote two books. One of them was a bestseller. I recorded two blues albums, wrote them and recorded and produced them. Been nominated for blues album of the year, my first time out of the shoot. Won several awards for the blues stuff, and I've got my third installment. It'll be recorded over the winter, released in the in the summer. Um, but when I decided to put a collection of songs together that I had for a very long time, I put it on. I called the project Long Pants. And long pants referring to adults and short pants children because it's very adult the themes in my in my in the music that's going to be on this and it's so not April wine it's so not blues this is just me and I have uh, as I jokingly say live in my acoustic show I say you know I have I have three kids one playing two with nuts you know <laughs> and uh, and uh, they uh, all have a song. I want to sing about my daughter, Amber, which is the oldest song. The night that she was born, 42 years ago, whatever, I came home from the hospital in the wee hours of the morning. I sat down in my studio on a piano. I wrote a song called Forever Amber, and I went to bed. And I finally got to record it and do it last year. And all these years, my family's going like, how come you don't put that song out? Because it's so beautiful. I said, well, where am I going to do it? April Wine, no. So I have a vehicle now for my song for her. And by the way, 42 years later, I didn't change a note or a word. I had it right. The very first time, that's a wow, because that don't happen often. But anyway, and, and one for my son who was diagnosed with diabetes. Uh, like me, it, it runs in the family. It was my turn. Bam, my, my brother, one of my two brothers has it. It's in my, it's in my, my, my genetics, I guess, whatever. Mm-hmm. So it was my turn. It's okay. Anyway, my son got it when he was only six, you yeah. know. So I wrote a song for him after we seeing what he was going through. And I got one from my other son. And I got one from my beautiful partner, Kim. And and then I started looking at some, my partner, Kim's native, partner native, Cinnaboy, Sue, Sue, Sue Cinnaboy native from out west. And I see her suffering. You know, I see her suffering when they start talking about the residential school system and, and the victims, which included her mother and her aunts. You know, she knows. I see the tears and I... You know, you watch this, and as a songwriter, and I care about her, what hurts her hurts me, you know? It affects us both ways. She's got kids, grand, you know, grandchildren. So, uh, you know, I wrote this song. I decided one day, oh, hell, I picked up a guitar, and I wrote, uh, I wrote, I, Jim and him and I got together and wrote a song called Some of These Children, They Never Grew Up. Mm. And then again, missing and murdered women, you know, in in, in this in this uh, country and the, in America too, been going on for years. And again, she knows people that have been gone missing. And I hear the, you know, what's going on out there from a lot of my friends and uh, that are native. And uh, so I get off my hands and I pick up a guitar and I write, you know, a song about that, which included our local young lady, uh, Dee Dee Austin sings on that. Gullah Johnson sang on that, both native. Uh, we did it uh, We did it down at Cape Breton on the reserve down there. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. And then Ukraine, watching what was going on in Ukraine. You know, Sheldon, I'm watching it like everybody else. 
I'm freaking out and I'm really, really feeling so bad about how the, um, all the homeless people, at that point there were over 4 million, I was over 5 million, you know, displaced uh, civilians from Ukraine that are without home medication, you know, all the things that we take for granted, they have none of that. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they're still uh, trying to find other family members. You know what I mean? It's like, and I watched that for a while and I said, well, I don't deal with politics and religion. I never did and I don't want to start, but I couldn't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. picked up to get off my hands and I, and, I, and I wrote this song and I put it up because it mattered to me you know it did it got to a point where it really was bothering me and then they picked it up the Ukrainian society picked it up the president of the of the chapter here in Montreal here in Nova Scotia we had a number of back and forth about it I started doing a few uh, shows in support of the, uh, the the people that were coming into Canada from Ukraine the young families you know and without their their father in all the cases I saw. And next thing I know, I get a beautiful award uh, for the song um, from an organization called uh, uh, SIFA, uh, Social Impact Awards, um, and for my song one um, for, for last year. And they had a big gala thing up in Montreal at, uh, at uh, the Rialto Theater. It was, you know, really nice. <laughs> So my song, yeah, and you know what? I also have, I know we didn't, we're not supposed to be talking about all this, but you got me going there. Um, and uh, on Long Pants, the last thing I wanted to say, there's also a song for um, uh, for uh, people that are uh, believe in assisted uh, suicides, if you will, you know. And I was working with uh, Dan Hill. Uh, Sometimes when we touch the honesty, it's too much. And he, sing, he tells a story about his mother who, who went to Sweden. Uh, to end her life, and, and she was 90. Mm. And uh, he's mulatto, so her husband was black, she's white, so they lived all through that racial, and still today, who are we kidding? You know, they've always had to deal with that. And then she decided, so that inspired me a great deal. I came home and write that right away. I sent it back to him. I said, what do you think? He said, I love it. So there's a song called I Leave Today. So it's a very adult album. That's uh, that's 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 the that's the thing. Absolutely. So, I know Sorry, you, exactly. no, not at all. These are, this is important to get out there and to, to let people know where you're at, because as you say, your last performance with April wine after over 50 years is going to be on March 2nd in 2023 here in Nova Scotia, as you described it, where it all began. Um, and you're not, you're not allowed to tell us where that is yet. Are you? No, no, I would love to, but I can't, you know, I think they're going to, they're going to announce it uh, at the beginning of February or the very end of this month. I'm not sure right around there. So for some, maybe the last show that they got to see you at was uh, Alderney Landing. And, yeah. And as you point out with, with the band. So this is a full April Wine show. And, and I can only imagine what this is going to be like, not just for you, but for the fans to be a part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some of them are going to be very happy to be there. Hmm. You know. But you know, we didn't announce it. I didn't, as I was touring the summer, I didn't say, oh, by the way, I won't be seeing you again. Yeah. Thanks for coming by now. And uh, I didn't say anything, and that was all of a sudden. That was it. It was announced that um, that I'm, I was leaving the stage, and uh, so now we can talk about most of it, you know, except for where that date is. But we'll know soon enough. Well, I wish you nothing but the best. I know you now have more time for recording, for for writing, for golf. For your cars, for Kim, for your family, <clears throat> I, I, and and when I said you've certainly earned this, I don't know that anyone else, perhaps, um, has put in the work and and the miles in order to get themselves to in front of so many people who just loved what you've done. So, as a fan, I, I just thank you for for all the great songs over the years and the memories. Yeah, you're very very welcome. I mean, you know. It's this is just a part, as much a part of my life as yours or anybody else's. You know, I grew up on April Wine Music. I did. <laughs> Miles Goodwin. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Sheldon. Good to see you.